today on Christ the Healer. Of the enemy. War has been declared. Talk time is over. It's a time of action. And at this point, there's only one thing to do, and it's time for us to come along with a bigger stick. We have a loving Father that says this, I'm greater than what happened to you yesterday. I'm greater than what happened to you today. And I'm greater than anything that can happen to you tomorrow. You ain't seen the best physician until you see the great physician. His grace is sufficient enough to give you the power to do it. Stop telling me all the reasons why you can't and give me the one reason why you can. It's because you're in Christ and Christ can. Welcome to Christ the Healer with Don Allen. Hey, thanks for watching today. I want to talk to you about something today. We need to become watchmen. We, we, we need to be the wall. We need to be those watchmen that are the wall. I'm not talking about being the watchmen on the wall. I'm talking about being the watchmen who become that wall. You know, between 900 BC and 192 BC, the Spartans, uh, the natives of Sparta, Greece, they were known as warriors. And so much so that the saying around Sparta was this, our men are our walls. They didn't have to build walls around their cities to protect their wives and children and their resources. If a threat came, their men were those walls. They were fierce people. They were known for fighting and they were very fearless. And when a male child was born in Sparta, if it was found to have any weakness at all uh, or any birth defect at all, they would take that child and they would take it up on a hill and they would leave that child to die because the whole culture was this if you're not fit to fight you're not fit to live at age seven every male child was sent off to military school and for the next 13 years they would be trained in very intense warfare taught to be tough taught to endure pain and hardship and taught how to have honor and how to fight and how to survive and at the age seven for 13 years they would train until they made it to 20 where they would say that they finally reached their manhood at 20. Then at 20 you became a soldier and at that time a soldier would spend all his time with fellow soldiers he was never allowed to go out with anyone else that was outside of the military they ate together they housed together they trained together and that day would come at 20 where they would take an oath of loyalty and we need some uh, wall builders and what i mean is someone who will stand up and become the, that wall the stop gap between life and death you know we're at war friends and uh, the walls of the church aren't, aren't uh, what it is that's keeping the devil at bay. It's you and I. We have to be the walls for our city. We have to be the walls for our family. We have to be the, the walls for our towns and our states. 2 Corinthians 10, 4 and 5 says, For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but they're mighty through God for the pulling down of strongholds, casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God, and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. The weapons of our warfare. Listen, no one promised you as you enlisted in the Lord's army that everything was going to be sunshine and, and rainbows. And it seems like that we have that new form of Christianity, if you will, that does away with any uh, form of true sacrifice. Let's just sit back. Let's let Jesus take the wheel. And uh, hey, what is it that you can do for me, Jesus? I see a form of godliness here, but I see folks denying the power thereof. And, and the reality is this, any real believer understands that sacrifice, that's entry-level Christianity. Romans 12, 1, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is just your reasonable service. True Christianity is born out of an exchange of lives, meaning that you can't have your life and have his life too. When these brave men and women enlist in our armed forces, they were told when they would eat. They began to be told what they would eat. They began to be told how they would eat. And here we have Christians out there right now feeding on any old thing they want to. They began to be told how they would dress and not dress. They began to be told how they would speak and not speak. They began to be told when they would sleep, how they would sleep, or even if they would sleep at all. They got a new mama and a new daddy. It was that drill instructor. They got a new husband and a wife. It was that drill instructor. 2 Timothy 2 and verse 3. Thou therefore endure hardness as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. They got a new person to direct every single aspect of their lives because they knew this. There would come a time that they would be called upon to possibly give the greatest sacrifice. Your Bible says a greater love has no man than this that he would lay down his life for his friends. I believe it's time for some men and women in the body of Christ to be called upon to give their lives a sacrifice for their fellow man. It's time to be called to the front lines of this battle. This is the Jesus mandate and we are called to nothing less than laying down our lives. It's time to wake up out of our slumber.
this milk toast Christianity and understand the times and the seasons. We are at war, friends. I don't care if you want to be. War is not asking for your permission. War doesn't operate on your timetable. Not at all. We are at war. And I'm sorry for what's happened here in our country where we almost can't stand to be in a church service for over 45 minutes long. And the seats are too hard. The room's too cold. The music's too loud. And we won't leave any room for the Holy Ghost to do anything. I don't have time. I've got somewhere I got to be. I'll pray when I want to pray if I want to pray at all. But I believe that if you tuned into this program, that I'm talking to some different folks tonight. I, I think we've got some folks out there right now that are ready for something that's not just status quo Christianity. I believe that. A group who has signed their name on the dotted line and have sworn to defend this gospel of God's kingdom. Listen, no one was drafted. We all volunteered into this thing. And Paul said, I'm a bond servant of the Lord. I wasn't born into it, he says. But I signed up. I give my faith and my trust and my, my family and my honor and everything that is in me. I will defame I will defend that blood-stained cross of Jesus Christ. I refuse to waste another drop of Jesus' blood. Now, our very armor, the Bible talks about our armor. Our very armor says that we're in a conflict. And I want to be surrounded with a group that's not in, uh, afraid to engage the enemy. I, I, I can't stand the sit back and wait mentality of today's Christianity. I'm looking for some Christians, a uh, Christian uh, colonel, uh, Chesty Pullers. That's what I'm looking for. Colonel Chesty Puller. I don't know if you've heard of this guy. I love the story of Colonel Chesty Puller. You can look it up. Look him up. Uh, you can Google him. You can Google anything. You can Google this man. But look up the story that I'm talking about. It goes something like this. Uh, Colonel Chesty Puller, he was known for his very aggressive attack style uh, in the United States Marine Corps. Everything with him was full-on, straight-on, attack, attack, attack. He didn't, he didn't play by the rules, if you will. He didn't play by the books. And the, he was just aggressive. He was going to come after you. He was going to storm in there, and he was going to overwhelm you. <clears throat> he was the most decorated colonel in Marine Corps history. He would take on any enemy right full head of steam right in your face and win every time. And the story that I'm thinking about goes something like this. He, he took his men into battle and the enemy knew that he would just rush in. And so they allowed him to do so. They allowed him to rush in and kind of baited him and set him up. And so what they did is, is the enemy that was behind him and, and to the right and to the left, they went on ahead and led him and they stood back. Well, then they let him charge in there, and of course, they closed in the flanks, and they surrounded him, and they, they came in behind him, and they came in to the right and left, and here he has the enemy in front of him, and he's totally surrounded by the enemy. And he calls into headquarters, and the call went something like this. We are totally surrounded by the enemy. He's in front of us. He's to the right of us. He's to the left, and he's closed in behind us. They won't escape us this time. Come on, now listen, it feels though, as though Christianity has turned into a, a wait and see what it is that the enemy's going to do religion. Folks, listen, I, I don't want some folks who signed up to get their needs met in three square meals a day. Listen, you can get that in any prison in the United States. You know what I'm saying? I'm looking for warriors who signed up to put a foot on the neck and a stone between the eyes of the enemy. That's what I'm looking for. Let's get our swords out and go to war. We don't have to fear death. We're already dead. You can't kill something that's already dead. We're already dead. We are crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live, but not I. Christ in me. And the, the life that I now live in this flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me, and he gave himself for you and I. I'm numbered among the walking dead. You know, that's the, the big thing now, the show, Walking Dead. Well, I'm one of the walking dead, praise God. And my God, the God that is in me, is incapable of inaction. Your God cannot sit back and do nothing. The weapons of our warfare, this prophesies a conflict. There's supposed to be a fight. Martin Luther King Jr. said the true measure of the stature of a man or a woman of God is not proven in times of comfort and convenience, but in times of conflict, we were not simply born, but we are built by our battles, formed by past failures, promoted by persecutions. So let the storm clouds arise. We don't worry. I'm under the shadow of the Almighty with you. Nero looked at the apostle Paul, the bondservant of the Lord. He said, Paul, I'm about to separate your head from your shoulders. I'm about to take your life. And Paul said, you can't kill a dead man. You can't kill a dead man. Our weapons are not carnal, but they are mighty through God. We don't fight this with the arm of the flesh. One of our greatest weapons is the mouth of a faith-filled believer. Paul's flesh was drug outside the city and he was stoned to death. But listen, you cannot kill a dead man. Suddenly a group gathers around Paul and that pile of blood-covered stones begins to move as Paul raises from the dead. 
makes his way from out under that pile of stone and, and uh, under that pile of death. And he raises up and he brushes the dust off of him and he walks right back into the enemy's camp and continues to preach the gospel of Jesus Christ. Because God was not done with him and God was not done with them yet either. Our weapons, mighty through God for the pulling down of strongholds. Friends, there are some strongholds in the land and we need some weapons, the casting down of imaginations and any thought that exalts itself self against the knowledge of Christ, bring, into, bring it into captivity, every thought to the obedience of Christ. It's a time of decrees tonight. Your Bible says in Job that we will decree a thing and it will be established unto us. That means that we begin to speak something, it pulls it down from heaven and it establishes it right here. What is it that we're saying about this conflict? Are we always talking about how we're on the losing side and, and the attacks and backing up? Or can we begin to make some decrees and begin to move forward and begin to take back our land and our families and our jobs and our churches? We need to take them back. General Norman Schwarzkopf said at the conclusion of the Gulf War, the swift and speedy resolve of the Gulf War was nothing short of a miracle. True freedom is never granted voluntarily by the oppressor. It must be taken by the oppressed. Someone needs to be sick and tired of being sick and tired. Someone must be angered by the slaughter of our brothers and sisters around the world. It's all coming too close to home now with the latest Murder of all the Christians in Ethiopia, that's nearing an area where, where Matt and I have traveled before. We know some of these people. I stood on that Ethiopian red dirt hill with the leaders of the surrounding tribes and the government officials, and we were standing on the bones of those who would not renounce Christ. The Hill of the Martyrs, it was called. They were killed in the late 60s during that time of communism. And now history repeats itself with ISIS. The governor of Angacha, Ethiopia, said to me, their blood cries out for something to be done. Uh, these that live there today, I know they will stand unshaken. If presented with the option to renounce Christ or die, they will stand tall and they will never give in. And it's a time to stand up and say enough is enough. I'm standing to be seen. I'm speaking to be heard. I'm lifting up the name of Jesus Christ in front of my adversary who is here to steal my children, steal my neighborhood, steal my state and my nation. No, listen, not on my watch. Not on my watch. I will not allow the few to tell me that I've got to change my beliefs just so I can bring comfort to them in their sin. I will not bend the book so a few can live a life of sin. I will not bend my beliefs to make you feel good about what it is that you've been doing. I will not accept it, condone it, or participate it in any way. Uh, enough is enough, devil. The blood of Jesus Christ stands against him. He's trespassing in a land that wants nothing to do with him. We didn't invite the devil to this party, and we're demanding that he leaves right now. Oh, certainly, listen, somebody may have let him in, but they're not with us. They're not in our camp. This is our show, and we're not going to stand for him interfering with us any longer. We didn't invite him into this land. We didn't invite him into our government. Certainly somebody did, but they were not with us. We are here now. We're running that show, and the government is placed upon the shoulders of Jesus Christ, and the devil is not welcome into our homes. He's not welcome to attend our schools anymore in our state. He's not welcome in our churches. He's not welcome in our capitals. Devil, he needs to get out right now in Jesus' name. You need to begin to tell him. You need to begin to make a stand where you're at tonight and begin to lay down the law. We've staged, a, we've staged a coup. We're overthrowing the kingdom of darkness and we're establishing the kingdom of his dear son Jesus. We have the authority, friends. He may have some power, but we have the authority and it's power backed with authority. All authority and power has been given unto me. We are the stormtroopers of heaven and, and we are here to start a Holy Ghost invasion in the land and drive out that adversary. Time to stand up, folks. Peace is not the absence of conflict. Everybody outside true Christianity crying that we got to coexist and accept everyone as they are. They call it peace. That's not peace. It's not the absence of conflict. Christianity has become no more than a standoff with the adversary. And we think that as long as we keep him at bay, then everything's going to be all right. But see, he's a liar. He's a liar, and he's the invader, and he will, he will take you to hell in a handbasket, and he's going to destroy your body. He wants to destroy your family, your finances, your future. He wants to rob you of your joy. He wants to steal your peace, and he wants to kill your calling. We continue to sit back and give him land and we keep thinking that it's going to appease him. We, we let the gaze go a little bit further. We let, we let the, the world do a little bit more. We think that we keep giving him land, it's going to appease him. But then he takes a little more and we say, well, that's okay. That's probably good then. It won't get any worse. And then he takes a little more and he takes a little more. 
John 10, 10, 10, 10 says he only comes to steal and to kill and to destroy. And the truth cannot be found in him. There is no negotiating with someone like that. A total 100% liar who can never speak the truth. You cannot negotiate with somebody like that. If our government would wake up and get back to some basic principles, we do not negotiate with terrorists. I'm tired of God taking all the blame when the reality is it's just a bunch of faithless leaders negotiating with terrorists. We've got to stop being faithless. We've got to draw a line in the sand and say that everything that is good and everything that is pure and everything that is of a good report. Well, the Lord gave this to me. No, you're mixed up. Why isn't God healing me? No, it's not him. Well, look what I learned. Look what I learned through this sickness and disease. You know what? Most of these adults say that they learned through sickness and disease. I learned in vacation Bible school without having to be sick and diseased. Come on. We need to grow up and stop blaming God. If God was going to give you sickness, he'd have to steal it. Where's he going to get it from? There's no cancer in heaven. So where's God going to go get a sickness from to be sure that he can somehow give it to you? Is it good or perfect? Well, then it didn't come from the Father of lights. If God gave sickness and disease and tragedy and pain, the Bible is a lie because the, the Bible says this, that every good and every perfect thing comes from him. We are being destroyed from a lack of knowledge, friends. And not just a lack, but honestly, we're being destroyed because of false information that we're being told here. Listen, there's too many low information Christians out there. Right now, the devil comes in to steal and to kill and to destroy. And listen, we've got to start, stop pointing your weapons at your own general and find out who the enemy is and start pointing it at him. Don't be under, uh, unwise. Understand what the will of the Lord is. The enemy is seeking whom he may devour. Little weak Christians that he can begin to pick off. And I believe that, that uh, he'll have to keep walking right past any of the viewers of this program because uh, we're strong in the Lord. We're, in the, we're strong in the power of his might. How in the world could we line up all the players on, on both football teams and give them all the same jerseys and the same numbers and then blindfold you and you try to coach that mess? You don't know who's on your side and who's not. Listen, friends, we cannot fit in anymore. You cannot fit into this world anymore. It's time to stand out for Jesus. He stood out for you on that cross. He was not ashamed. It's time for you and I to take a stand and dare to be different. To everything there is a season. This is Ecclesiastes 3. To everything there is a season, a time, to every purpose under the heaven, a time to be born and a time to die. A time to plant and a time to pluck up that which is planted. A time to kill and a time to heal. A time to break down and a time to build up. A time to weep and a time to laugh. A time to mourn and a time to dance. A time to cast away stones and a time to gather stones together. A time to embrace and a time to refrain, refrain from embracing. A time to get and a time to lose, a time to keep and a time to cast away. A time to rend and a time to sow, a time to silence and a time to speak. A time to love and a time to hate, a time of war and a time of peace. That's Ecclesiastes 3 verses 1 through 8. Listen, there comes a time where diplomacy has failed. And we've got to stop trying to create dialogue at the table of the enemy. War has been declared. Talk time is over. It's a time of action. And at this point, there's only one thing to do, and it's time for us to come along with a bigger stick. That's the only thing you can do. The devil's not interested in your church attendance. He does not care that you love, love, love Jesus. He does not care that you've been born again for 25 years. The only thing to do now is to pick up a bigger stick. And we have two of them that made up that cross of Calvary. And I'm going to pick up my cross daily and i'm going to allow god to use that stick like he did in the hands of moses i'll throw that stick down and i'll watch the power of god consume anything that the devil tries to show i'll, I'll raise that stick and i'll watch my god part the seas and he'll make a way where there absolutely was no way to be made listen come on we, we, we are taking the fight to the enemy we've got to get a bigger stick and, a guy, and allow god to use it like moses something miraculous it was August 2nd, 1990, when President George Herbert Walker Bush said this unprovoked aggression by Saddam Hussein in Iraq against Kuwait will not stand. When's the last time you gave the devil a deadline? When's the last time that, that you said, hey, by this time next week, my family's going to be saved and filled with the Holy Ghost? That's it. Deadlines. Have you made some deadlines? I may not see all the drug addicts delivered today. I might, not, I might not see all the cancer patients healed today in my state. I may not see the gays or lesbians turn to Christ tonight. 
all in one moment, but I'm telling you right now that as I see into the realm of the Spirit, whatever's been exalting itself against the knowledge of Christ is packing its bags, and it's getting ready to leave this building. It's getting ready to leave my county. It's getting ready to leave my state and my country. It starts its journey right now. I'm giving deadlines to the devil. I hear the battle starting right now as the saints watching this program, they begin to clang their swords. Come on, you need to start opening up this book and begin to clang your sword. Open up this Bible. It has been unsheathed and my weapon is poised and ready and I'm not afraid to use it. We got to tell him, get out of these bodies. We declare war upon him today. Stop sitting back and waiting for the fight to come to you. Let's take it to him. Let's be like Colonel Chesty Puller. Let's run in there and let's attack and let's overwhelm the enemy before he overwhelms you. Raise up your sword and clang it in the face of the enemy and do not be afraid to use it. Too many people don't unsheath their weapon they leave it just laying there and they leave home without it we are at war my friends i'm not going to my grave or heaven whichever comes first i'm not going out knowing that my generation was the one responsible for seeing homosexuals in the pulpits of churches i'm not exiting this life knowing that my generation allowed the biblical definition of marriage to be changed i, I i'm not stopping until my breath is taken from me I will not leave the face of this blue marble planet until I know the cries of the martyr's blood and all the aborted, murdered babies have been answered. I'm not going anywhere until I know that I have run my race and I've completed that race in its fullness. He's like a roaring lion. It's time to be sober. It's time to be vigilant. Wake up and stand for something and stop falling for anything. There is no middle in this fight. You can't be AWOL. Well, how could God allow 9-11 to happen? Listen, somebody wasn't on their post. Somebody wasn't making up that wall, and we allowed the enemy in, and we can't let it happen again. We have to be the wall. Deadlines, January the 15th, 2001, be out of Kuwait or suffer the consequences. When's the last time you gave the enemy a deadline? What are you going to do when they give you a bad report? What are you going to do when they say you're going to die? When's the last time you ever told the devil that he was going to pay for what he's done to you and your family? When's the last time that you told the devil how it was going to go? Hey, Jesus, your cousin, uh, your friend, John, he's going to die. I'm going to kill him. What are you going to do about that, Jesus? Jesus launched out of there, and he held the greatest healing campaign in the history of the world. And if you were anywhere near, near Galilee, you were going to be healed and set free from de uh, de diseases and demons and, and all these different things. The lame walked, the blind saw, and the devil suffered the consequences. Time to make the devil pay. And everything you take from me, you're going to get caught, and you're going to pay back seven times over. Time to draw a line in the sand and tell the devil you don't dare cross over the threshold of my doorway ever again. And if he tries, you unleash all of heaven upon him in the name of Jesus Christ. And you drop a light bomb on the kingdom of darkness. I can remember getting bullied when I was younger. And there was this particular person who, would, who uh, liked to bully me and pick on me and had for a couple years and bullied me. And we were down by the lake on this particular day and fully dressed. And he kept trying to push me in the water, push me in the water, push me in the water. And suddenly I turned around and I literally drew a line in that, in that beach right there on the ground. And I picked up a big old rock and I said, if you cross that line, I am going to smash your skull with this rock. Well, the next thing you know, he found himself picking himself up off the ground with a bloody skull. Now, listen, I don't I'm not saying that you resort to violence, but I'm saying there comes a time when you got to draw the line in the sand and then you go ahead and do what it is that you said that you're going to do. I'm talking in the spirit now. I'm not telling you to go out and stone people to death. I'm, that was a different time in my life. But we don't sit back and do nothing because the enemy is advancing daily. Why do we hide behind the rocks while our leaders hide in the tents and lead from behind? Is there not a cause? You're going to have to get mad. Is there not a cause? What are we fighting for? I'm tired of seeing on the fence Christians. It's time for us to stand unashamed and shout at the top of our lungs, I'm here, devil. I'm right here. When are we going to say that enough is enough? How many laws are going to be passed against Christians before somebody says, I'm done? I'm no longer fighting on the devil's field. This is our house. It's our land. It's our time. All this stuff has gone on for ages, and the devil has a loud voice and instills fear, and it's not real. But I'll tell you what, if we hear it long enough, faith comes by hearing, right? We're hearing how ISIS is coming to get you. We're hearing how if you're a Christian, you're going to have to bend to the homosexual laws and not preach this book anymore, and they're going to come and get you. Friends, I'm telling you what, we're hearing stuff. We're hearing stuff. I'm done with you, devil. I've had enough, and you need to shut your mouth mouth or I'll shut it for you just like my ancestor David has done before it's my house the one who formed the universe by the sound of his voice and his decree that's my father we're the ones that dwell in the secret place of the most high we, we remain stable and fixed under the shadow of the almighty whose power no foe can withstand 
You can't shake me anymore, devil. I'm stable and fixed. We are the ones who say the Lord is our refuge, our fortress. My God, on him I can rely and, and, and in him I confidently trust. And he has delivered you from the snare of the fowler and from the deadly pestilence. He has covered you with his pinions and under his wings shall you trust his refuge. His truth and his faithfulness are a shield and a buckler. Devil, we're not afraid by the terror of night, nor the arrow, the evil plots and slander of the wicked one that fly by day, nor the pestilence that stalks in darkness, nor the destruction and sudden death that surprises and lays waste at noonday. A thousand may fall at our side and ten thousand at our right hand, but it shall not come near us. You go on, devil, and send the biggest, baddest, ugliest sickness and disease you can send. Send an Angelique, send someone to take me out. Only a spectator you shall be. Yourself inaccessible in the secret place of the Most High. You can't get anywhere near me, devil. I'm inaccessible, as you witness the reward of the wicked. You have made the decision and made the Lord our refuge, our Most High dwelling place. No evil will befall us. No plague or calamity can come near our tent. He gives his angels a special charge over you to accompany and defend and preserve you in all your ways. They shall bear you up in their hands, and we will not dash our foot against the stone. Devil, whatever it is that he's trying to bring against us, we tread upon the lion and the adder, the young lion and serpent, we trample underfoot. Our love is set upon the Almighty God, therefore he delivers us, he sets us on high, because we have made known and understand God's name. Listen, we have a special knowledge of God's mercy and love and kindness. We trust and rely on him, knowing he will never forsake us, nor we him, never. We shall call upon him, he will answer us. God will be with us in trouble. He will deliver us and honor us with long life. He will satisfy us and show us his salvation. It is time for a miraculous healing in our land. We are marching into enemy-held territory and taking back what it is that the devil has stolen right now in Jesus' name. Hey friends, thanks for watching today. I just wanted to talk to you a moment about us going on ahead and standing up and declaring some things that we are the children of God and the devil will no longer be able to run over. It's time to make a stand, my friends. It's a different season. I think you can see that. You don't have to look too far to begin to see what season we're in. I think it's a time for war and it's time for us to stand up and be those walls. Hey, the weapons of our warfare, they're not carnal, they're mighty for the pulling down of strongholds. Let's get to pulling down strongholds. And we want to help you do that. I want you to join me every Tuesday night, 6.30 p.m. Central Standard Time for our live online class. We've been talking about binding the strongman. If you go to 1412.com and hit that register for live shows, you can join me at 6.30 p.m. every Tuesday night for our live online video classes. I'm encouraging you to do that. And also every Wednesday at 10 a.m., uh, on the 1412 Radio Network. Again, go to 1412.com, hit listen now, 10 a.m. every Wednesday, Central Standard Time, and join us and let's take back this land. Thank you for joining us today on Christ the Healer with Don Allen. For more information about Christ the Healer in this ministry, go to www.twoguysandabible.com. You'll find a variety of information and products that are helpful in confirming that God is willing to heal and He's still doing it today. We want to take this opportunity to offer you a free audio collection of 101 healing scriptures on CD. You can also follow us on our Facebook page for Two Guys in a Bible. Connect with us and view daily posts on on healing. Another way to receive teaching on healing is through our radio station. Get online and go to tunein.com. Once there, type in 1412 radio and you'll be able to listen to some great non-mainstream music and our top rated program, Undevourable. If you need to contact us for prayer or you'd like to schedule Don to come and speak in your area, you can call or send an email message and someone will contact you. Thanks again for joining us and we'll see you next time on Christ the Healer.